so this question says a diver goes into somersault um which i'm not sure what it is but uh during a dive by talk okay so it must be describing somersault <laughs> you didn't actually have to know what they are if for rotational kinetic energies okay let me just give that a symbol uh, she has some rotational kinetic energy 99 joule and her moment of inertia in the tuck is so after she talked herself the rotational inertia is um, 9 and I think that is the correct unit for rotation inertia a mass times distance squared what is her rotational rate during the somersault oh so I don't think I don't even have to there's no process here to think about so you should have a mental image that you have something, someone who's rotating with some angular moment, uh, the angular velocity, and this object or person has some rotational inertia, and um, you should know the formula for rotational kinetic energy in terms of these two rotational kinetic energy. By analogy to translational kinetic energy, you can guess it's one half rotational version of one half times i, rotational version of mass, times omega squared, rotational version of v squared. So once you are given the rotational kinetic energy and rotational inertia, then you can solve for omega. The only thing you have to be careful here is I'm seeing they are wanting the answer in units of revolutions per second, which is a frequency unit. So when you calculate omega here, that won't be in revolutions per second. That will be in radians per second. So you have to convert this unit from radians to revolutions. And you do that by multiplying by, um, multiplying by 1, meaning um, quantity that um, where the numerator and the denominator are physically the same quantity. So 1 revolution in radians is 2 pi. So um, by doing this calculation, you will convert from radians per second to revolution per second. And what that's done is the conversion from um, the angular velocity to frequency. You know, frequency is angular, angular frequency divided by 2 pi. So, um, so we'll do that at the end. I'll first calculate omega and then make sure to do this. The thing that's challenging about this unit conversion is that neither the revolution nor radian are real units. So sometimes when you do dimensional analysis, um, this kind of thing, it's easy to miss. So, so okay, let me solve this for um, omega. So solving this expression here for omega, um, I'm just going to do that in my, uh, well, do I want to do that in my, you know, let me uh, do it step by step just to, as a, I don't know, algebra review. Sometimes it's helpful to kind of um, have that. So let me start out with kinetic energy is equal to one half I omega squared. And my goal is to get omega by itself. So I think through what are the mathematical operations that will do that. If I take this and multiply the whole thing by 2 over i, that'll get rid of this. So I'll have omega squared by itself. And then if I take a square root of the whole thing, then omega squared won't be squared anymore. So that'll give me omega by itself. So omega is going to be equal to, and I do these operations now to the left-hand side. So multiply kinetic energy by 2 divided by rotational inertia, and then take the square root. So that should be omega. You can um, double check it. You can um, use the sage math. You could have actually done that. Um, and uh, let me plug in the numbers. I'm just going to use this as my glorified calculator. Uh, square root of 2 times kinetic energy, 99 joule. I'm just going to make sure that everything is in basic SI units. Divide by uh, rotational inertia, 9. Uh, kilogram times meter squared and if you do the unit check um, you should get unit of uh, 1 over second which again because radian is not a real unit 1 over second is equivalent to radians per second so 
uh, let me make sure it does decimal approximation. 4.690. So now if you put this in, it'll say it's wrong because that's in rev radians per second. I need it in revolutions per second. So I have to divide this by 2 pi. So let me take the previous result. The underscore is the, the sage math syntax meaning previous out output divided by 2 times numerical approximation of pi. Oops, um, it will actually divide by 2 and then multiply it by. This will make sure that it actually divides by 2 pi. Um, so that will give me 0 0.746 revolutions per second. Maybe that's right. It feels a little slow, but um, I'm not uh, 7465. I'm not a professional diver, so uh, I don't know if uh, revolutions of less than 1 revolution per second is correct or not. Ah, that's the answer again.